home night on senior night and you got an opportunity with all those guys at the end, just what does it mean for you to see those guys go out, especially Armando, who's now played the most games in ACC this year? Yeah, it was just a really emotional night of uh, seeing them before the game with their parents on the floor and you know, just thinking about so many memories, so many moments that we spent with each other and you know, I've talked about how things get so busy that you just go from moment to moment. You don't have very few times just to be able to enjoy the moment. And it was nice to be able to enjoy the moment of, of them being celebrated for what they've done for this year's team, for what they've done for this program, this university, and this community. And um, it was just a continuation by the way that they played tonight. Did you know he's going to shoot first threes there at the end? I did not. <laughs> um, but if they go in, I'm okay. And, um, it's the first three that he's hit since uh, we played Oklahoma and Charlotte. So it's the first of 2024. And if he makes it, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem. But if he misses it, then we'll have a discussion. Often, <laughs> often teams kind of struggle on senior night because there's a lot of other factors at play. There's a lot of emotion. Your club was very dialed in tonight. A couple of the guys were talking about how the mission was to be dialed in. Don't let the other things sort of get in the way of that. No, they've been really good at that all season, uh, eliminating or turning down the noise and focusing on what's most important. And what was most important was our preparation, our practice, and how we played tonight. Um, even in the huddle, the guys just kept saying more to be said, more to be done. But I think it was also a motivational factor from the standpoint they it was it was a really a desire for them, you know, to hang a banner and um, to at worst be you know co regular season ACC champs and that's something that hasn't happened in five years and it was something that this group desperately wanted to do. Aside from getting a win, what, aside from getting a win, that's what. I, what were you most pleased with tonight? I was really proud of our defense. I, th I thought, you know, you talked about being locked in. I thought we were really locked in defensively. I thought our energy, our effort, attention to detail was really good. I thought we were impactful on the ball, with the exception of some offensive rebounds that led to seven points in the first half. I thought we, we, we did a good job limiting them to one shot every possession. I thought we were disciplined for the most part, staying down on shot fakes. Uh, it put us in good positions to defend their three-point shooters. Defense is where it starts for us. Defense and rebounding and taking care of the basketball. I felt like we checked those three boxes the entire game. You were going back to Armando. He got very emotional with us uh, in the uh, media room just a few minutes ago. Um, what is your description of his of his legacy, knowing that this is going to be his final game here in front of the uh, Tario Nation, and just what it, what he means to the entire community? Well, I, I, I'm glad that you said that. It, it, he's more than just what it means to this team. It's what he means to this program, this university, and this community. I mean, you think for himself and RJ, what they've been through in their four or five years here at Carolina. I mean, just the explosion of college basketball with the transfer portal, extra COVID year. I'm sure as they came in as freshmen, they didn't know they were going to deal with that, with NIL. And this is a group that went through a pandemic and they've had to deal with a lot. And so for them, you know, one of the things that I think is great about senior night that I hope never goes away, the tears of happiness are because you're happy, because you're sad, but it's also you're thinking about all the perseverance through the rainy days that have allowed you to experience tonight. And that's the cool thing that, you know, through all the things that they've been able to go through, that they stayed in one school as successful as they have been, that's the legacy that they leave um, for this team, for this program, for this university and this community. How important was it for you to give them that curtain call to see you there at the end? And what was that moment like sharing that, the songs with them as they left the court? Yeah, I just, you know, I told them that they were, it, earlier today that this would be a moment that they would remember for the rest of their life and for us to be in a position where we can take them out one at a time and for them individually be celebrated I know this is something that they would remember for the rest of their life and um, 
our crowd has been off the chart. And they were here in a celebration before the game and then after the game, just showing how much they appreciate not only their game, but who they've been here at Carolina. And I'm glad we had the opportunity to do that. Hubert, um, you know, before the game and even at points during the game, RJ got a lot of one more year chance. There were a lot of, you know, one more year signs as well. I guess kind of how different was it seeing that? Because obviously, you know, a fifth year senior is a more, I guess, recent thing with the COVID and, and everything like that. So how different was it to see, you know, people you know, pleading for a, a player to take a, a fifth year? Well, I mean, they've done that over the last couple of years. They did that with Leakey and, and they did that with Armando last year. <laughs> So, you know, since the extra COVID year, we've, we've actually had a couple guys um, hear those chants from the student body, from the fans of wanting them to come back. And, you know, RJ's had a historic career. He's put himself in a position to be able to make the best decision that's best for him and his family. Um, can't think of a better player to coach or be around this program than RJ and his family. Hubert, uh, let's talk about Cormac Ryan. He had a big game tonight yeah. going against his own team. Uh, how did it feel for you just to see the transfer to ball out tonight? Yeah, I mean, Cormac, that's the sad part for me is I only get to coach him for one year. You know, what he has brought to this team and this program in just one year, he has left a legacy. Um, by the person he is, by the player, by the teammate he is, you know, usually it's a somewhat emotional playing your former team, but I, I don't think there were very few guys from the team that were on when he was at Notre Dame. So it was almost you know kind of playing against a new team. But you know, Cormac's always locked in. He's our guy, the voice in the locker room and the huddles on on the court, and he had everybody you know focused on what was most important for us, and that was to get a win tonight. Tell me about the. In defense, the intensity that your seniors like like Cormac and Armando brought tonight. Yeah, just defensively, I, I, our guys know what allows us to have success. I, I mean, I think we can score. I, I think what has allowed us to be successful thus far has been our commitment to defense. I remember speaking to you guys like right before the Oklahoma game, and you know, I had spoken to the team, and I said we hadn't made a full commitment to it to defending and rebounding. And since that time, I think we've out rebounded every opponent 19 in, in a row. 19 in a row. I mean, that's huge. And so, and then from that Oklahoma game, obviously it's varied a little bit, but I, I think our defense has been consistent. You know, in, in league stats, we're number one defensively and um, defending the three and, you know, in combination with how we can score that puts you in a position to be successful whomever you play. I'm on day two for two from behind the arc. Were you aware that he was becoming a sharpshooter? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, he, but you know, he can shoot the three, and, and I've told him he can shoot it. I just want him to shoot it at the right time. And because he's so good around the basket, I don't want him to go away from dominating points in the paint. I'll let anybody on the team, you, you, can, you can use whatever is in your bag. Sometimes the, the question is, you know, a, a debate on what's actually in the bag. <laughs> but, but, um, I've given Armando permission to shoot the three. He can shoot it. Um, I just want him to shoot it at the right time, and I don't want him to go away from what he does real best, and that's rebounding and dominate points. So you say the three is in Armando's bag? It is in his bag at the right time. Now, when is the right time? Maybe never. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna, for me to determine. <laughs> Since we're going to be back here in two days. Adam, last one. Hubert, did you have any sort of message afterward about clinching a share of the, the ACC regular season, or is that? I did. Talk about that another day. No, I, we talked about it. You know, we talked about it before the game, we talked about it after the game. And we talked about you know, the opportunity to play Duke um, on Saturday and, and have a chance to win it outright. And so um, they were looking up in the uh, rafters the last couple of weeks and 
they were saying that there's a little bit of room, there's some room right there next to that 2019 uh, banner. And they were talking about it. This is really important to them and they wanted this group to have something that was, that was sustainable and <coughs> they were partially able to do it tonight. And, but we're excited about preparing and playing against a Duke team that's, I think, playing their best basketball thus far right now. We'll talk more about Duke on Thursday, 1.15 with a couple of